We're here at another. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we have to do that clap thing. I don't know why for some reason. There might be a secondary audio. After but there is no the secondary audio, audio bonehead because there's no like. No, I'm just screwing with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at another spot interview for NeverEndingPanel.com with tour author Sam Butler. Uh, Sam, why don't you tell us um, about your books and uh, what you're working on? Okay. Uh, as you said, I'm a tour author. I have had uh, I had a trilogy come out, the Stoneways trilogy. How long? Uh, Question: How long did it actually take for it to come out in completion? Uh, it well, you mean from first book to last book? Yes. First book came out in September of '06, which in itself was a nine-month delay of the original publication date, and the last book came out in April of '09. So that's two and a half years. Okay. So, uh, so nine, tell us about the, the series itself. The series is a Stoneways. It's three books: uh, Reefin's Choice, uh, Queen Ferris, and The Magician's Daughter. Uh, and it's basically, uh, the, way I, the way I like to describe it, in the first book, Reefin makes his choice, which is whether or not he's going to choose magic. Magic not being an entirely good thing in this universe. Uh -huh. uh, the kind second like being a lawyer? Yes, it's, in fact, okay. it's far worse, probably, because you actually really? do have to sign the, the, the pact in blood with the devil. Oh. Uh, and uh, in the second book, we How's learn... that different from being a lawyer? Uh, well, you let okay. him talk about his book. <laughs> this is about Sam, not about you. Okay, and, you know, and, and besides, I know lawyers who who uh, who actually have managed to negotiate their way out of that contract. So he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what happens to Reefin in the second book, is first you see what he does with the magic. What Reefin is your protagonist. Reefin is the protagonist. Okay. Uh, and what Reefin does in the second book is he, uh, he does some good things with his magic. But in the third book, it's all about what the magic does to him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, which is, you know, a lot of a lot of fantasy doesn't go to that place. Uh, there's usually no con no no cost to magic. You wave your wand, and you know, you the, the shiny sparkly things right. come out, and there's no cost to it. I, I, I like that notion. Choose whether or not you want to have this thing. It almost seems when you said that, oh, well, of course you want magic. Who who wouldn't want like extra powers to do stuff? <clears throat> But right, there's but, a cost. Yeah, there's a cost. And the people offering it to you are not necessarily the people you really want to hang around with for a lot of, uh, I always a lot of your life. I always know when to buy gold. When people are offering to sell gold. Sorry. Yep. I always know when people are offering to buy my gold, that's when you buy gold. When people are offering to sell you gold, yeah. that's when you sell gold. <laughs> Those commercials are amazing indicators yeah, of what you should do with gold. Well, they're the guys that are in the market. Okay, now. so yeah. the, the third book is already out? The third book came out in April. Okay, great. Um, I wrote a very odd literary, almost, well, probably two literary sequel, because I had to, uh, in which I bring one of, there are actually three protagonists, and uh, Avender, Ferris, and Reefin. Uh -huh. um, and it's as much Avender and Ferris's story as it is Reefin's. Uh, and some people would say it's maybe Avender's story more than anybody else's, because he's sort of the second banana. And uh, I bring Avender to America. I always, always wanted to bring, you know, everybody goes from this country, from this, from our world, to a fantasy world. And occasionally a character from a fantasy world will come here. Right. But not very often and never for a whole book. So I wrote this book about Avenger in America, which I actually don't think I'm going to sell. Because it's a little, it's not commercial enough. But it was a book I had to write, and so I wrote it. And sometimes, you know, you got to just write what you can Sometimes you've got to get it out. You've got to get it out. We asked uh, Jerry Purnell and Larry Niven why they wrote uh, the, their latest iteration. Uh, in, uh, in, Inferno. Inferno. Oh, okay. He said, was it the money? He said, no. I, he, Jerry Purnell said, I had this itch for 30 years, and I just had to write it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, But now I'm working, I'm actually working on a science fiction book now. Wow, okay. um, uh, I've, I've, you know, it's odd that I wrote a fantasy novel, or because I do think of the three books as being actually one novel, one long novel, right. um, and I, because I actually like science fiction more than fantasy, um, <clears throat> I, I like the ideas of science fiction, um, but I'm not a scientist. You know, I'm not very good at that kind of stuff, so I figured, oh, in fact, I was the English don't, major. Don't let that stop you, it didn't well, stop yeah, us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm a copywriter, you know. I teach economics. And, and as I've learned now, okay, that's a good reason, I'm going to go for it. And I've, I, what I call, I call it a cross between The Moon is a Harsh Mistress and Carl Sagan's Contact. Oh. Um, the Moon is a Harsh Contact? Moon is a harsh contact. Or well, the contact is a harsh or mistress. Contact is a harsh mistress. Uh, yes, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> contact is always a harsh mistress. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an idea. I should have. A, I should have a nice S and M character. Well, they're the doing book. that with uh, the the three. What is it? Uh, oh, with the the ghouls. Um, 
Pride and Prejudice and Ghouls or what? Uh, Pride and oh. Prejudice and Zombies. Pride yeah. and Prejudice and Zombies, so you know. Well, they, but they're doing an S and M one now. Well, I don't know. Be, I mean, if, if they can well, do combos, can. why can't we? Damn it! Oh, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm trying to think what what hasn't been done. Mansfield Park, Mansfield Park, obviously, <laughs> it's a private men's club for S and M dominatrices. <laughs> We got invitation only. Yeah, it's oh, no, eyes wide shut. Never mind. That's right. That's right. It's already been done. Darn. Darn. So this Cooper, is what you're working on, but you're not sure. Well, oh, no, this is what I'm working on now. Gotcha. I, mean, I got the other one. I got the other one out of my system, okay, and uh, uh, it's making the rounds. But you know, I, maybe it sells, maybe it doesn't. Got it. Um, uh, tour has on the option. Tour has the option on it, but it's not really a tour kind of book. It might be a uh, smaller press kind of book okay. if, if if it's anybody's kind of book. Right. But you you know you, it makes the rounds. You know you write something. You got to try and sell it, whether you think Absolutely. it's going to sell or not. And uh, so now I'm working on the science fiction novel. Gotcha. Um, and uh, you, is that uh, is that set uh, bought? Or no, it's pure it? spec. Pure spec. Um, uh, I tend to. You know, I, I'm going to do what I'm going to do anyway. Now, when you do like pure spec, do you did you pitch it first to your editor and say, "Hey, I'm, I'm working on this thing." Like, oh, that sounds like something we'd be interested in. And then you go for it, or you just you go for it, and then you're gonna you you give them the first three chapters, you write the whole thing. How do you how would you, you know, uh, I'm, do it? Well, I have not um, I have not actually pitched this one. I, the, the one the one before this that I actually don't think I'm going to sell. I actually did pitch, and my editor liked it. He liked yeah. the idea. He said, "I don't think we I don't know if I can sell it or not." Right. But I do like the idea. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, so let's go for it. Well, okay. oh, that's what they said to J.K. Rowling. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, no, she got she got several hundred rejections first, didn't she? Oh, she, she, she wrote the book. Yeah, Twenty-seven, thirty-seven, something like that. Like that. Wrote, yeah. And and so I have not pitched. I wonder what those twenty-seven people are thinking. <laughs> The, the, the same thing the guys who turned down Steven Spielberg for, uh, or Eminem's turned down Steven Spielberg for that famous scene. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, there's, uh, you gotta, you know, some, sometimes, yeah, you make a choice. You right. know, you're a professor of economics. You make a choice, you're wrong, you live with it. Right. You go on to the next one. Right. Um, uh, but, no, I, I'm a very organic writer. I don't, I, I, I would love to be able to write off an outline. I mean, you know, it makes it so much easier. Right. Uh, you, you know, you know what you're going to do every day because what? Well, this is what's next in my outline. Right. And uh, but I, I cannot produce that way. Right. I have to, I have to sit there organically and write. I, I have to spend a lot of pages, having my characters, go to the bathroom, eat, uh, you know, talk to each other about stuff that is never going to be in the book, because that's. I mean, I have to get to know the characters before I can get in deep enough into their heads right. to actually write their story the right way. I already know what the story is going to be. I know where it's going to begin, I know where it's going to end, I know some scenes in the middle. But in order to tell their story, I really have to live it with them for, you know, you for, be, for 750 pages that will then be cut down to, you know, 400 you pages. Versus yeah, yeah, I have to, yeah, exactly. I have to, oh, and, and the creation is in the observation. Right. Like, you know, I could do something with this. You know, no, so, I, I completely get it. Yeah. When you said the whole bathroom scene, a scene popped in my head in the story we're working on now, and all of a sudden, like, of course it would be like that. So yeah, just poof, it's there. Yeah. You just can't help it. And, and you know, I, 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 it's it's much better, much more. Hey, you want to be a you you want to be a writer? You learn to write write summaries and synopses and pitch ideas and and yeah. outlines of ideas. And and you know, you don't have to stick to them as because um, I've done I have done some some outlines and, and in fact I did one of the of the book that I finished that uh, I don't think I'm gonna sell um, as but as my editor said when I gave it to him you know a year from now when you hand it in I'm not gonna remember any of this <laughs> you know, this is just a sales document right. and you know a year from now I'll completely forgotten it and the book is gonna be whatever you make it to be so don't worry about whether it, it's gonna work or not in the summary just you're trying to sell me an idea got it uh, all right well um, Sam, thank you very much thank for being you. on NeverEndingPanel.com and letting us know what you're working on and what's coming out. And we will make sure to do a superimpose in front of the screen. With you have a website, presumably. I have a website. Uh, Don't you say it, even though we're going to put it on is, the screen. Because um, it's going to be right there. It's <laughs> look up. www. Uh, at Veiling uh, sorry, www.veilingstoneways.com. There you go. And it's not much of a. It's mostly a blog with a website behind it that is a very archaic website, which um, I haven't gotten around to fixing, but you, you get, you'll get there. You get the word out. Yeah. Thank you very much. much. It's always a great pleasure hanging out with you guys. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Doc. <laughs>